wild, best believe we got the crowd standing. Got the luchador shutting down the mid Atlantic, taking over. We in a whole nother league. And if you doubt us, you can see us in the ring. Coming off the top. Road. We are live here, episode three of the American Lucha Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Vandellis. And I'm here with a very, very, very special guest. He's the man. He's the guy. The American Lucha Wrestling Heavyweight Champion of the World, Chris TNT Taylor. Chris, what's going on, man? It's going on, man. You ready for the holidays? Yeah, man. What about you? You ready? What are you doing with the with the prep for the holidays, especially with uh, any shows coming up, you know, or just spending some quality time with the family? Just spending quality time with the family, man, and, uh, for the next big thing, dude. Yeah, man. So I want to I want to dive into you know what made Chris TNT Taylor the wrestler, the champion, the man he is today. So how what got you into pro wrestling in the first place, man? Just uh, an undying love for it. You know, I've always wanted to do it since I was a kid, man. Uh, just growing off Hulkamania and uh, Macho Madness, seeing the Nature Boy, uh, Road Warrior Sting. Check your dog. I mean, there's just so many guys, and it's just blessed to see all that talent growing up as a kid, and uh, just you know, it never went away. You know, it, it, everybody just kind of like tried to get me away from it as much as they could. Like, ah, you should do something else, but just eventually, man. You know, I did everything and tried to be uh, in quotations normal, but you know, the wrestling would never die. So, <laughs> uh, so what made you take that leap and become a pro wrestler? It really, it got to the point where, like, I would watch, you know, TNA, Raw, SmackDown, you know, there was some major shows from them because it was hard to watch Indy on, like, the cable networks and stuff, but, um, it got to the point where I just started getting depressed, and I'm just like, man, you know, I missed my chance, I missed my opportunity, and, you know, I moved to the small town, and next thing you know, there's this wrestling player in the email, and so... I emailed the company, and I was like, hey, you guys have trials, you guys train people, you know, and... They responded to me and let me know they had an open camp and like they had all these people that show, that said they would show up and I was the first guy to actually do it. <laughs> oh wow, that's awesome, man! So you really you really ca- caught a break in terms of you know just being. You, do you think it was the thing of just being the right place, right time? Did you have any connections going in, or were you just kind of like taking a leap of faith into this thing you always grew up watching? Taking a leap of faith, man. Uh, you know, it was just that was on my heart and I felt like really I can't go much further in life without actually attempting to do something in wrestling you know yeah man so let, let's let's dial it back, and I know you and I have talked about this behind the scenes in terms of the origin of the TNT nickname. Where did that come from, and did you give it to yourself, or how did that come about? <laughs> it's funny because um, my initial name for uh, wrestling I came up with was uh, the cool Chris Cool. Or, yeah, it was the cool Chris Cool. That was my trainer thing. And I was <laughs> like, I, <laughs> they were like, you know, you should go ahead and start with uh, the cool Chris Cool. And I was like, uh, that's okay. But the catch was I had to do with all okay. So I'm like, nah, let's try something else, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I came up with the Chris Taylor aspect. Um, I don't know. We have enough time for me to dive into the origin of that one. Definitely, man. But, uh, we got all the time. We got all the time in the world here. Go for it. <laughs> um, so when I was, when I was training, man, and getting deep into, you know, they told me to think of something, and um, I was I had this dream one night, man. That I was backstage at a, a wrestling event, and there was Mister Perfect and Rick Rude just sitting there, standing and, and observing me, and I'm like, yeah, "Have you given any advice to me?" They said they were telling me advice, and I was kind of reminiscent of uh, the song Dream by the rapper The Game. Yeah. And so I took the Taylor aspect of that. So, you know, I tried the cool Chris Taylor, and somebody bought the entrance music, and the, you know, you know right, the guys, the veterans, that they're like, man, the cool Chris Cool, you know, that's not catching me, you know. It, it was kind of jumping the gun, but it was kind of dead on arrival. So they're like, we got to come up with something else, man. So Definitely. it was me and a couple of other veterans. We just stood there and brainstormed, and somebody just ran and was like, Chris TNT Taylor. Wait a minute. Chris TNT Taylor. I like that. And I'm just like, that actually has a catch behind it. So 
<laughs> the rest is kind of history. Yeah, so it just kind of was like it all fell into place, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I come from I come from like a, a music background, and it's kind of like what you just told me there kind of reminds me of you're just sitting around like jamming with whoever, and then just something yeah. something clicks, you know. Okay. So so one of the things I want to ask you because obviously we deal with a very risky profession when it comes to you know I guess safety you know even financial security or something but what why what's your why why do you do it man um i tell you man it's really just been an undying love for it um you know just the the fact that i'm actually living a dream man and you know whether i catch eyes from uh from the bigger companies it's almost like it doesn't really matter because you know right now i'm just appreciating it oh i'm just soaking it in and i just some of that, I really, I don't see it stopping anytime soon unless I just become unhealthy, you know? Yeah, man, hoping for the best as well. Like, And what was it like winning the American Lucha Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship, man? What did you feel? What went through your mind? It was surreal, man. Because, um, you know, I had an opportunity at another company and to be the top guy, but unfortunately, you know, just... If the time was all wrong, the story was all wrong, and I just, I hated it, you know? Yeah. Um, we'll keep them anonymous, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, America Lucha gave me an opportunity, and I mean, I was in a match with three other guys that I respect and death, you know, um, and think the world of, and I mean, just coming out of there, I mean, to me, like, it's surreal, and just now, I just, I want to be the guy that, you know, takes the title and make it into something and not having the title make it in make me because you never want to be that guy. You don't understand yeah. it as a wrestling fan but as a wrestler now you kind of dig more into it. You want to be the guy that makes the title mean something. So that's, you know, that's my goal and I feel like I hadn't really come to yet so definitely it's a more work to do. Yeah, so you're, you're how many months into your title right now? Let's see. Six months as the top guy in American Lucha Wrestling. And I got to talk about it because I saw the match. I got a chance to call it. You and John Evans, man, that was one. And I'm not bullshitting, dude. I would never do that. That was one hell of a fight, man. That was a go. Uh, bring the fight to him. I mean, he's a big, nasty guy. And, uh, yeah, he is. I just wanted to let him know that I wasn't going to back down, especially the cheap shot he took on me. Yeah, man, rent free in your head. I got an eyewitness <laughs> account of that, and yeah, he 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 took your title. He rammed you into your own car, jabbed you with your own keys, hit you with a brick. You could even throw out the kitchen sink and everything, but you still got up, and you really took a beating to him. But it ended. For those who didn't see the match, go check it out on YouTube. I swear it's awesome. But it ended with with the double count out. And my reaction, and I, I love, I loved the match, but I was just like, really? But then I, then I remembered, this is probably not the last time that they're gonna fight. So if they, if there is a rubber match, there's a round two of Evans and Taylor. What kind of match do you want it to be, man? You want it to be a traditional match? Because I think, like, I just think a wrestling ring can't hold you to. Um. You know, I'll be honest with you. I think we're beyond traditional, but, uh, you know, that's up to John to call. Because, <laughs> I mean, it don't matter what kind of match you want. We have a ladder match, last man standing match. It don't matter. I'm I'm ready to go ahead and seal the deal and let him know that I'm not scared of him. I let him know that I can beat him. Yeah, man. Dude, so so if you got a message, because John Evans would be another person I'd love to have on the podcast. If you have a message for John Evans right now, what would it be? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I have a message for him. Go ahead. I'm ready for the rematch. I'm so ready for this rematch. Uh, name the time, place. We'll do it again. You got me already just foaming at the mouth wanting more for that match. But I don't know if you saw this or not. Your former buddy in TNTKO, Ted Ireland Jr., back with the company, going to be working some oh, yeah. dates in 2020. What was your reaction when you uh, learned that we re-signed him again? Pure joy. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, it's one of those things that I hope it would happen again, and I'm just kind of like, you know. You and me both, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, a lot of people don't understand. I've known Teddy for years, even before we had started wrestling together. Um, mm hmm my daughters actually ended up going to the same school and were best friends. And, you know, she was upset when they moved. And I was kind of like, man, you know, that was her best friend. So it was kind of hard to swallow. And, I mean, I had known Teddy, and he was a great dad. I mean, great dad, great guy, just down to earth and humble. And then to see that uh, he got involved with the wrestling business, I mean, it was a blessing, you know. Um <laughs> We always talk. So, like I said, our friendship goes beyond wrestling. So, I mean, just for him to actually be back in uh, America Lucha, dude, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I really can't express it, you know? Yeah, man, I'm sure. And uh, I remember when I did that piece on uh, you and Ted as a team, like, he, he looked up to you as a mentor, man. But now it seems like he might be gunning for your spot, man. He said that he's going to, you know – release a new side that American Lucha wrestling fans might not have seen before. Would you love to square off against, you know, one of your best friends in Ted Ireland jr. Perhaps for the title as well. Well, I mean, if it comes to that, it comes to that, you know, everybody gets into the wrestling business to become the top guy to become the champion. And I don't fault him at all for that. So if it comes down to it one day, then so be it, you know, I welcome all challengers, friends, foe, family, everybody. So, I mean, if it, we had to come through one day, then so be it. Yeah, man, you're a fighting champion. I wouldn't be surprised, and just what a match that would be. Could also go the route of trying to be a double champion and uh, getting getting Ted on the tag team grind, reuniting TNTKO. Maybe, maybe not. What What are your thoughts? Or okay. have you have you talked to Ted at all since the since the news broke? I've slipped him here and there, but. Uh, we haven't really talked a lot, man. And I tell you, I'd love to go to the TNT KO reunion because, unfortunately, you know, the play got pulled too soon, I felt. And yeah. It had a great run in the tag division, but, uh, yeah, you know, the second breath of life, let's see what we can do with it. Let's yeah, man. Yeah, Ted, if you're listening, I'd love to have you and Chris both on, you know, do some reminiscing. But let's look back because, you know, common theme so far in the podcasts, Young History has been the best of the decade, the best of the year. Chris, what was your favorite moment from all of wrestling in the 2010s? Oh, <laughs> I don't even know. It's hard to nail one moment, man. Um you know, just rattle off a few as well. You could. Yeah, one of my favorite moments, like as far as uh, my career goes, or uh, in know? general, man, it could be your career, it could be WWE, AEW, you know, even TNA, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, I tell you, a lot of people will probably be surprised by this, but you know, one of my favorite moments from you know big league wise is uh. Dolph Ziggler winning the world heavyweight title, even though, you know, his reign got cut short by injury and whatnot. It was just to see one of my favorite guys get that top prize and it was a huge ovation. Like, I was screaming in my house, and I never really get that excited over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, Dolph Ziggler cashing in the money in the bank. That's an all-time moment, I think, at least. And um, yeah, for for those who don't know, Let's go back a little bit more. What wrestlers did you grow up idolizing? You know, like like who who was your guy when when you were growing up watching? Man, um, it's hard to nail somebody down. Let's I know it's like asking that. you to pick your favorite children, but like <laughs> you know, like I said, I grew up uh, Hulkamania, so yeah, I'm a Hulkamaniac. But uh, really, the guy that really did it for me, I would say it's Sting. Um, Sting. One of my buddies basically called Sting my wrestling pops. <laughs> <laughs> Your wrestling pops. That's awesome, man. And then another another question I wanted to ask is like, because I've never really thought about this before either, because, you know, some people might just think wrestlers just come out and they're jacked just by nature. How do you stay in shape, man? How do you, as, as the years go by, because you're a veteran of this industry, and I've got the utmost respect for you and everyone who's been putting in the work. How do you stay fit? How do you, you know, keep your mind, your body, your soul at peace when you're out there giving it all? Uh, I'll tell you, man, it's, it's a day-to-day practice, to be honest with you. Um, day-to-day, 
you know, because uh, a lot of people don't know this, but when I was younger, I was diagnosed with sports asthma. So one of the things I I made it a goal because I had beat asthma one time, but due to stupid decisions or whatnot, my asthma came back twice as rough, and it progressed to sports asthma. So yeah. I made it a lifelong decision to kind of beat asthma again. And, you know, I'm not going to say I totally beat it, but I think I have it against the ropes because – I focus so much on cardio and um, calisthenics. It's not just one thing I do. I try to go ahead and make it well around the thing. Like I've even practiced yoga too. <laughs> the kind of got that DDP body, yoga you know. grind, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't even advanced that far yet. I'm still procrastinating on that, but I need to jump on that, dude. I've heard so many good things about that, so that's definitely on my to do list. So definitely just um, uh, taking it day by day. Yeah, man. Just. Um, like I said, I try to work out at least four times a week, maybe five. Um, I, 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 you know, I've got to slow down due to my injury, but I'm starting to slowly pick it back up. Um, I just try to watch what I eat. I, I've definitely tried to portion it. Um, well, I, was, I actually went from like 245 down to 230. So, Oh, yeah, man. Congrats. Kind of, yeah, man. I, it was a huge thing that I needed to do, and you know, I'm very proud of it. So trying to maintain that and not eat so much anymore, but I got you. Um, definitely trying to portion better. Um, and not just try to study wrestling, man. Just try to go ahead and see there's something I can emulate or try to bring it in my arsenal. Just little things, man. I just, I don't really stop. Yeah, I was going to say, how much goes into you know, studying maybe your past matches or going in and seeing like, oh, Chris Jericho did something really cool or something like that and taking that and applying it. It's it's almost like watching tape, isn't it? Or watching film in the locker room. Oh, yeah. If I have some downtime, I definitely try to go ahead and watch some of the better workers and um, not just indies, but the guys that have done it. You know, um, there's so many great names that you can go ahead and just put down a list and you try to figure out which one fits best for you. Um, like, I, I usually watch a lot of old school guys, you know? Yeah. I watch guys like Magnum, you know, obviously Sting, I just named him. <laughs> uh, so that, but I try to go ahead and bring that intensity and try to figure out what I could do. Uh, Kerry Von Eric, those guys, like, in my opinion, those guys were ahead of their time. Those are some of my favorite guys and I just try to go ahead and bring that energy that they have uh, some of the Arsenal. Yeah. And I like to just try to keep it not too simple, but stuff you don't see a day because it seems like a lot of guys say, like, everybody does the whole dive thing. I'm not going to lie. I love dives, but I had not done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do try to do is just make sure that the things I do, I do it well, make sure it's kind of like repetition. Like Michael Jordan and, uh, and free throws. Yeah. You know, he always practiced it. He always made sure he did great at it. So that's just one thing I don't just I want to keep building. Hell yeah, man. And I'm going to let you go in a minute. But one more question for you. The decade's coming to a close. The year's coming to a close. 2020, what's in store for the ALW champion, Chris T.N.T. Taylor? Uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and make sure... I put America Lucha on the back and just take it to another level, man. Um, Hell yeah, dude. Like like I said, I'm not really comfortable where I'm at. So, I, like I said, I want to go ahead and uh, elevate the level, elevate the game. Just have all eyes back on America Lucha, man. Yeah, man, for sure. Is there anyone you want to get in the ring with specifically out of anyone in the company? Uh, specifically? Not really, man. I'll tell you. I want all the talent. Just I want some of the best wrestlers, not just in North Carolina, but outside of North Carolina, to come in and say they want to show it. So, I mean, nationwide, heck, if we reach global, man, <laughs> they yeah. can come too. That, that, that's definitely a fighting champion answer right there. And that's something, that's one, those are two words I'd sum you up with in a heartbeat is a fighting champion never backing down from a challenge and he even stepped up to do the third episode of the american lucha podcast with me chris tnt taylor the american lucha wrestling heavyweight champion of the world man have a happy holiday if i don't see you before the new year looking uh forward to getting back and kicking it with you once we get back 
Oh, yeah, definitely looking forward to you. You have a great holiday, too, man. You and the family. You, too, man. Thank you so much. Then that is all she wrote. One of the last podcasts of the year. Chris TNT Taylor. If you didn't love him before that interview, you sure as hell do now. Before I leave you here on the American Lucha Wrestling Podcast, we have brand new content up right now. That's right. Right now on our YouTube channel, a holiday special Savage on YouTube. Triple threat tag team match from Rent 3 in your head. Skinny dudes with attitudes. Three brothers. And the wrestling prodigies. Someone told me that uh, Jay Malachi might have had to defend the, uh, the title solo. His partner Jackson Drake out with an injury at the time. Go check it out. I was there. I called it. It's one of the best matches I've ever seen. Jay Malachi is one of, one of a kind talent. Three brothers, you gotta love them. Skinny dudes with attitudes, absolutely despicable as well. But follow them on Twitter at Lucha American, along with Facebook as well. And check out all the content we have in store. Until next week, I'm Andrew Vandellis. Goodbye and good night.